morning everyone, Carol here at Oak House Journal. Thank you for joining me today. And this is the third video in the little mini series that I'm doing showing you how I'm making a Yabanuki or a Japanese thimble ring. So in the last video we created our mandrel and if you watch that video you will have seen that mine is slightly smaller. I prefer to work with a slightly smaller personalised um, mandrel. But now that we've created our mandrel we can go on and actually create our Yabanuki ready for stitching. So let's get started. As you know I'm using this uh, Yabanuki kit made by Gina B Silkworks for creating my own ring and you've got absolutely everything you need in the kit. So as I showed in the first video, you have some card, you have um, this leaflet which tells you how to stitch the three designs for three different rings. You have this sheet behind here which is your instruction sheet for creating the mandrel and also it goes on with really good details and instructions for how to actually create your ring and that's what I will be covering today. So I'm just going to put this to one side. Also in the kit you have your threads for stitching so that's the um, ideally it would be the blue the two blues and then you have the white for creating your padding inside the ring. Now there's nothing to stop you using these other colours but I would suggest you use the, the white so that when you do your stitching on top um, you don't get a colour actually showing through which might happen um, if you use these colours um, rather than the white but the choice is yours and actually once you get adept at using or stitching uh, the Yabanuki ring I suggest you go over to Gina's website because she has loads of beautiful threads over there that would be suitable for making your rings with two or stitching your rings with two. So let's pop those to one side. You have um, your piece of fabric and that's what we will be working with today. You also have two um, needles and I'm going to pop those to one side. You also have some interfacing, very fine, lovely interfacing and we will be needing that and we have this really good um, Yabanuki tool that Gina's devised. So first off you need to lift out those pieces. Okay so I've got my piece of bias binding which measures five centimeters when across when you open it all out. Now we want to cut this in half and create two strips at 2.5 um, centimeters and the best way to do that is actually to take the bias binding and give it a good press to get rid of these two creases so I'm just going to do that so here is my piece of bias binding all nicely ironed and now what we're going to do is we're going to just chop it in half um, to get that 2.5 centimeter strip that we're going to be using um, as you can see, you've got plenty of bias binding in the kit. Um, you've certainly got enough to do your three rings and more. But the lovely thing about the tool that is included in the kit is that you can cut your own bias binding using that line along there. And Gina, in her video, actually covers details about how to do that if you need to to see that in more detail but for the purposes of cutting our bias binding you can also use this tool you don't need to um, place it on a mat and measure it out with a ruler although that is one way to to do it you've got a cutting line already marked out for you on the tool itself so this is my piece of bias binding just cut in half using the tool and now what you want to do is you just want to take the short edge here and just fold it over. I folded mine over by uh, about five millimeters and just give it a press. Now you can either finger press it 
but because I've got the iron out from um, ironing my bias binding flat, I just leave it out and just do that. And it gives you a nice straight edge, a nice creased edge along there, which will be very handy in a moment when we come to put this on our mandrel. So the next thing we do is take a piece of card and you want to cut a um, one centimeter strip off the card off this long edge and again if I bring this in you can use the tool for doing that so we've just used this line here for cutting the bias binding in half so that width there is 2.5 centimeters this line here is the line that you need for cutting your card and that's the um, one centimeter line and again you don't need to use um, the tool but given that you've got it in the kit it is so handy to use so I'm just going to line up my um, tool on my card I've got my craft knife handy to one side and I'm just going to cut a strip off the card just move that down slightly reposition it So there we go, that's my strip of card cut. Now just pop this to one side because you're going to need that um, for subsequent rings. You won't need it again for this ring, but as you can see, again, you've got plenty to use. Once you've got your cardboard positioned on top of your bias binding, just make sure that it is as centred as you can get it and you can just move it slightly on the bias binding and on the mandrel with your finger if you need to but making sure that your edges are still aligned now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the top edge and the bottom edge of the bias binding over the top of the cardboard which sounds really tricky um, it's a little bit fiddly it's n it's not tricky because the bias binding is cut on the bias and has a bit of a stretch to it now I tend to find that you can either use one of the needles in the kit to tease this fabric over the cardboard or sometimes I find it works better with a pair of embroidery scissors. So it just depends on um, how it's going to go. I tend to start at one of the edges. As you can see here, I've got the overlap edge. And I'm just going to tease that over onto my cardboard and try and hold it with my thumb. So it's trapped under my thumb. And then I'm just going to ease round as I go. And you'll find that it tends to flip over quite easily as you go round moving your mandrel. Now once I've done it on one side, what I tend to do is put a finger inside the mandrel and put my thumb against the top edge of the ring and I just hold the, the ring in place with my thumb and then just push the fabric onto the cardboard at the bottom end to get a nice a nice edge now what you need to do having done the bottom is you need to do the same at the top so again I'm going to find that overlap edge and I'm just going to flip it on to the cardboard now I always find one edge is easier to do or one um, side is easier to do than the other um, but it will go, as I say, it is a little bit fiddly, but it does go. And this is working quite nicely with the needle. And I'm using the blunt end of the needle, not the pointy end. And I've got it on my cardboard, as you can see. And now all I want to do is just push it on at both edges so that you can get a nice clean meet in the middle. Now don't panic if it doesn't absolutely meet in the middle because we're going to be sewing this in a moment and it will, um, the tension of the sewing will pull that in together. All I'm doing now is making sure that I'm getting it as neat as I can so that if there is any overlap in the fabric that it just sits nicely under 
the other edge and as you can see there I've got I haven't got the fabric meeting but I'm not bothered about that in the slightest when I go go round it sewing as I say it the tension will pull that in together okay now when you come to sew this the color that you sew it in won't matter because the stitching will all be hidden but what I would recommend is that you use the white DMC thread that is in the kit um, and just use a couple of strands of this um, I actually prefer to use another product I actually prefer to use this which is Invisifil and I'll put the link in the description box down below um, and this is a plique thread and it is if I hold that up to the camera it is very very fine that's a double thickness of the thread there um, and I prefer to use this it's very strong and um, it just sits nicely so all I'm going to do now is starting at the area where we had the main join and the overlap I'm just going to put a little stitch in to get myself started now I have got a, um, a quilter's knot in this thread a little bit fiddly as I say but once you get going not a problem at all it'll all sit nicely into place for you and I'm just I really should have buried my quilter's knot underneath my join but I didn't so excuse me on that one okay so that's all nice and secure now the stitch you're going to be using to go all the way round is a herringbone stitch and I would suggest that you do two rows of it going round your ring because it will give you a much better tension um, between your top and bottom ends of fabric but also as you go round the second row of herringbone stitch you can work that in between the stitches of the first row and that will give you a nice uniform um, tension all the way round so do a stitch at the top about two to three millimeters from the top of your your ring hold it with that first stitch to keep the tension with a finger I use my middle finger and then go down to the bottom and take another stitch again two to three millimeters from the bottom of your ring and that is all you need to do is work your herringbone stitch all the way around your ring going from the top down to the bottom now herringbone stitch is a very basic embroidery stitch so I'm, I'm not going to explain how to do it um, here but basically it is just like a little back stitch as you can see I'm going through my fabric going up to the top and taking another little back stitch all the time keeping my thread ahead of me as I make that little stitch now the stitch herringbone stitch is on YouTube um, it is also explained for you really well in the leaflet so you shouldn't have any problems at all if you're not really following what I'm doing here but as you can see I'm keeping my tension all the way round, and it is pulling together my two pieces of fabric so they're meeting beautifully in the middle there and if you keep working that all the way round ending up with quite a big thread here working that all the way round it will give you a really nice finish to the inside of your ring and I tend to find it I work better with my finger just tucked away inside the mandrel the only problem with this Invisivil thread is it is incredibly fine thread although it's very very strong I just struggle to see it sometimes um, especially if I'm trying to work underneath the camera at an odd angle um, so please excuse me if I appear to be struggling it's not hard in the slightest it's just the angle that I'm working at and if you find that your fabric is is looking like it's a little bit loose 
on either of the edges, do what I did just then, which is just tease it further onto your ring. So I'm just going to carry on all the way round. I've almost done one pass or one circuit of my ring. And when you get to the end, just finish it off with a couple of little back stitches just to finish off your thread. And there you have it. So now you can take your um, ring off the mandrel. Everything is nicely secure and what you should find is that you have a nice neat, if I can just tilt that slightly so you can see, you should have a nice neat edge inside here where you did your fold on the short edge of the bias binding and your fabric inside ought to be nice and smooth all the way round. Also on this side you shouldn't have any hard ridges at all. If I can just tilt that a little bit you should be able to see. Sorry it's probably catching the light a little bit. Oh that's better. So you shouldn't have any hard edges um, or a rough edge here. Um, it should be relatively smooth. It's not absolutely critical because you're going to be um, wrapping this in a moment or two with some padding. So that's my little ring all ready to go. And um, the next job in hand is to wrap it with a length of your DMC thread all the way round. So now what you want to do is you want to take off a length of about a metre and a half. Now that is a really generous length for what you need to do. You're not splitting your threads, you're keeping um, all six strands together. So I'm just going to pull myself off a lovely length or a good length of my DMC thread. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be wrapping this thread round the centre of our thimble but you want to keep um, to within one millimetre of either side. So to start with, so I hold it in the centre, take my thread out to the outside edge, bring it all the way round and then cross over so that my edge or my end of my thread gets trapped as I wrap round and because it's trapped round because it's trapped there I can then wrap all the way round with my thread keeping it trapped under each subsequent wrap of thread and all I do is just carry on wrapping round like this. Now you can use your mandrel if you prefer for this. I just prefer to use my my finger. But as you can see, this thread is getting trapped under there every time I go round wrapping my thread. And you want to keep it nice and firm on your ring. And you want to try and keep it nice and neat because we will be going back over this wrapping to use up the rest of our thread. So I'm just trying to keep it all nice and even, nice and smooth as I go all the way around. And what I'm going to do now, because that is well and truly trapped under there, I'm going to snip it off like so. And I'm going to carry on going round. Now, as you can see, I've got to within one millimeter of this edge. So what I'm doing now is I'm just wrapping my thread round my ring and taking it back over the previous wraps and working my way towards the top of my ring again. Now you may well find that, depending on your finger size, that your thread runs out before you get there or that you haven't got enough. 
but that's not a problem just make sure that you've got a fairly nice even consistent wrap all the way round and I'm almost getting to the top edge how much thread have I got I've still got quite a bit of thread here so I've gone all the way round I'm just going to snip off my end and then just I'm just going to tweak that bit of thread on at the bottom because it's just working itself loose and then to secure this end all you need to do is either use a needle like I'm doing here or your embroidery scissors whatever you you fancy using and just stroke that end or that end of thread underneath the other threads and just making sure it's not slipping off which it wants to do at the moment there we go and just stroke it gently underneath your other threads now what I like to do now when I finish my ring is I just push my thread slightly in just to make sure that I have that one millimeter gap at the top and the bottom so I'm just trying to do it gently with my nail all the way around and then I flip it over and I just do it on the other side just checking that that one millimeter is there all the way around now that is important to have that one millimeter because that is what you are going to be sewing into when we go into the stitching part of completing our ring so there we go so that is our base thimble ready for stitching and I'll see you in the next video and we'll get on with that